my previous tutorial on how to install and configure DSCP server, I did not complete the configuration of our DNS server that was added. We were using the default configuration that was set during the installation process of the DSCP server. To set up our DNS server with full DNS functionalities, we need to configure few more items. And in this demo, I will go over these configurations. First thing we need to do is to make sure that we have a DNS server installed. If you haven't gone through my previous tutorial on our DSCP server installation, what you need to do is to go to the server manager application, open manage, and in here we will go into add roles and features, click next, make sure it's in role based or feature based installation, click next. Make sure we have the server in here, click next and have this DNS server checked off and installed. So I already have installed this feature because this role was added as a part of my DSCP server installation process which I went through previously. So if you don't have the DNS server installed, this is what you need to install it and then once you are done, you can close the installation wizard. Now, once you have the DNS server installed, go to the tools and open the DNS options from here. And on the DNS manager, if you have not installed any other roles or features, you probably will have some items on the forward lookup zone and no items in the reverse lookup zone. But if you have installed the DSCP server and DNS manager was automatically installed as a part of a feature of the DNS installation like I did on my previous tutorial. You will see on the forward lookup zone your domain name. For example, for me, it is going to be sanuja.local and some associated IP addresses and records right here. Now, you might ask if it is already added and it is done here why do we even need to configure this because it is already installed the dns is already installed as part of our dscp server installation the reason for that is if i select my server name right click and select launch ns lookup you can see our server ip address 192.168.1.3 come up as an unknown server. So in other words, if I go here and type sanuja.local and press enter, the server name going to be an unknown name. So in other words, this is not properly configured for forward and reverse lookup. In fact, when we go back to our reverse lookup zone on the DNS manager, there is no entries currently available here at all. So how can we fix that? So what we need to do is to make sure that you have the sanuja.local or your domain already in here. And if you don't have that, you can go through the process of adding it by selecting our forward lookup zone, right clicking and selecting new zone and click next and make sure it's in primary and click next. Make sure it is to all DNS running on this uh, domain sanuja.local next and you can name it and finish this part of the wizard. If you don't know how to do this, I have already posted a video on this on my previous uh, tutorials, so you can go ahead and watch that. But we already have the sanuja.local here because we have installed this part as part of our the DSCP server installation. Because when we were installing our DSCP server right here, this part, which is already posted on my YouTube channel, during this installation process for DSCP, I already have automatically added the sanuja.local as part of that installation. So to set up the DNS server with the full functionalities, we just have to add a few entries to our forward lookup zone and reverse lookup zone. Forward lookup zones are basically used to map hostname to an IP address. 
while the reverse lookup zones are used to map the IP addresses to a host name. In other words, if somebody is looking for an IP address, it will resolve the host name associated with that using the re reverse lookup zone. In the forward lookup zone, when somebody uh, look for a host name, it will resolve to an IP address. So this is the backward or forward of each other. The first thing we need to do is to create a reverse lookup zone because there are no reverse lookup zones available right now. So I'm going to click on the reverse lookup zone, right click, select new zone. And in here, we're going to click next. We will keep it as primary. In other words, it's going to create a copy of the zone that can be updated directly on this server. And we're going to click next. We're going to make sure that to all DNS servers running on this domain controller. So that means everything associated with Sanujuro.local will respond to this DNS server. I'm going to click next. And I'm going to keep it on IPv4 reverse lookup zone. Click next. And we have to give a network ID. So this basically identify your network associated with your server. So for me, it's going to be 192.168.1. The reason for that is if we go to our server, our internal LAN segment have 192.168.1.3. So the network portion of this is basically 192.168.1 is that portion. So if you don't know how the network portions of an IP address work or IP addresses work, please check out my CCNA lectures that I have already posted on my YouTube channel where I go into depth of how IP addresses work. So for now, just remember, this is the network ID 192.168.1 because rest is basically other items on the IP address, right? And we're going to click next and we're going to keep it as allow only secure dynamic updates. Click next and finish. So now we have a reverse lookup zone and it has added two entries. So we can see that SSServe 2022 sanjur.local and hostmaster and bunch of other items in here. Now, if we go back to our SSServe 2022 up here, and if I right click and if I click on NS launch NS lookup, it still come back as default server unknown. Right here, you see that the default server is unknown. So this is because we still need one more entry in the forward lookup zone in order for it to resolve our sanuja.local. In other words, the sanuja.local domain back to our IP address 192.168.1.3. To do that, what I will do, I will go into the forward lookup zone, click on sanuja.local, right click in here and select new host A or triple A. And I'm going to leave the name blank, but I'm going to add the IP address 192.168.1.3, which is the IP address of this server, 192.168.1.3. Basically, what I'm telling this system is that, hey, you know, if they are looking for sanujit.local or 192.168.1.3, you know, this is the association in here. So this is the forward lookup zone. So when a host name sanuja.local is looked up and this IP address will get resolved. By creating an associated PTR record, it will also make sure that the reverse lookup zone and everything get updated. And I'm gonna click add host and you will get a message saying the host record has been created and I'm gonna close this done. Now, if I go back to our DNS server at the top here, the SS serve to 2022, if I right click and go to launch NS lookup, look that. Now we have these default server sanuja.local being resolved to 192.168.1.3. So if I type sanuja.local, it will give me that 192.168.1.3 IP address associated with that. And that basically resolve our domain name to the IP address of this server. As of now, we have a completely functioning, fully functional DNS server installed in this machine. That's everything for today. Please make sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or concerns regarding any of the items that we covered with respect to DNS manager, 
please feel free to reach out to me. Until next time, have a nice day.